Glad to have everybody tuning in. Ready to chop up some good game with you guys as I normally do. Um, don't forget, if you do not have my book, Foundational Black American Race Beta, you can get that on Amazon right now. Foundational Black American Race Beta, that's the name of the book. Um, let me jump right into the topic. Right now, people are talking about the Black News Channel, and they are closing their doors. The Black News Channel, they are shutting down. The people are pulling the plug on it. They had their last broadcast. They fired everybody, basically. They just shut everything down abruptly. Told people at the last minute, hey, don't bother to come back Monday. Oh, they did it real cold. They did it real scandalous. The non-black news channel, it was going to fail from the beginning. And right now, a lot of people connected with it. They're copying, please. Uh, Mark Lamont Hill, he was on here complaining that a lot of folks, nobody got their paychecks, their last checks. They didn't get their checks. And the the non-black owner, I think it's some East Indian dude. And there's some other white money involved in that, saying that he just don't want to pay people and whoop de whoop. Listen, there's no retirement plan for Buck Dancing. That was the Buck Dancing News Channel. What's up, Lioness Crown? I see you in here. Family, that black news channel, and most people hadn't even heard of it. Right now, they're trending because everybody got laid off and it's shutting down. But a lot of folks have never heard of it. And you know why you didn't hear about it? Because the grassroots black community weren't messing with them. Let's be clear. They were in 50 million homes. That network, that television, they had some big money behind that. They had some big money behind that. One of the um, co-owners of the Jaguars This East Indian guy, he was one of the big investors. And again, there were some other people involved, a lot of big white money. They put a lot of money in this and they failed. Now, let's break down why. And I want foundational black Americans to understand your power. I want you to understand your strengths. They failed because you, foundational black Americans, you didn't support that nonsense. I want us to understand the power that we have. We can make or break folks. We can make or break certain things. Now, let's be clear. What they're trying to do now, uh, I've seen some folks online talking about when some black folks need to get behind this, the white man, and this. I'm not trying to hear none of that. This was not a true black network. These were non-black people using black shields to push agendas that were not in the best interest of black people. The Black News Channel, it was a bunch of Democratic talking points, agendas. They on there pushing immigration. They're pushing all of this nonsense, uh, all, all this rainbow stuff. They're pushing all of these agendas. And the Black masses, especially the Black grassroots, we just rejected it. Black folks just weren't rocking with them. And we knew about them. The Black community did know about them. We just weren't rocking with them. And let me tell you why. Black folks, especially foundational black Americans, we're tired of non-FBA people trying to be our representatives. That's one thing. Because we know these people don't have our best interests. We're tired of non-FBA people trying to be our spokesperson. So the people behind it were non-FBA. The ones funding it were not FBA. And they're getting a bunch of people on air who are really not FBA. Or if they are FBA, they got some other kind of agenda, like a rainbow agenda or something like that or something else. But most of the people they were promoting on there wasn't no real FBA agenda happening there. And we're not rocking with them. And another reason why this thing failed is because basically these were the same type of people that whole congressional black caucus crowd, the root, that crowd, that ebony jet crowd, that real out of touch, condescending boule, that bougie crowd who thinks that they're the smartest people in the room when it comes to black people. 
that right there turns us off the black masses because we know that these people are paid shills. We know that these people are paid to push agendas and we were just not rocking with them. And another thing, and I want people to understand this people who try to pander to the black audience in, in, in hopes of getting in good with white corporations what they do, that boule crowd, that congressional black caucus crowd, that the blabbity blacks, as we used to call them, one thing that they do, they they have a very bad habit of talking down to black people. They talk at black people and they think black people are stupid. They really do. And we can feel that and we can sense that. They think they're the smartest people in the room. They come around us pushing these weak agendas and they're trying to con us to go along with these things that we know are not going to turn out in our best favor. And they try to use these weird shaming tactics. They do all these little janky maneuvers and manipulations because they think that we black people, the black masses are just dumb and they can program us for their white benefactors. And we are rejecting them. We're letting them know hell no. And that's one thing you cannot keep trying to disrespect the intelligence of the black audience. Black people and black audiences are not stupid. These people are used to that love and hip hop crowd. That's how they talk to us. They think that all of black society are the same type of Negroes who sit up there watching love and hip hop all day and, and housewives of this and that. They, that's the extent of black society to them. In their minds, that's who they think we are. And all of us are not on that. All of us are not on that. There's an intelligence sector in black society and we want to be talked to correctly. And that's what we do here in the real grassroots black media. We talk to you and we talk intelligently and we're not going to talk down and we don't have to talk ratchet. We don't have to dumb the conversation down for you because we respect the audience enough to know that black folks can sit down and have intelligent dialogue and we don't have to have a talking down to black folks are tired of that type of disrespect. Black people are tired of people coming along, especially these democratic shields pushing these damn agendas. We don't want to hear from no fake phony quote unquote black news network. That's basically a shill to push Bidenism, Kamamiism, and all of these other agendas. These people talking to us about why we need to get down with immigration and why we need to get down with this gender, this and gender, that. No, 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 no. Y'all not going to talk at us like we're stupid black people, especially foundational black Americans. We want tangibles. We are focused right now and we're looking at our group and we're looking at representatives who are supposed to bring tangibles to us. And anybody coming around us not talking about no tangibles, we're not rocking with them. This is us getting on code majorly. This was a major move. Us letting that little white run, non-black run network fall to the ground. Don't let them shame you. Don't let them shame you about that because black folks weren't running that. That wasn't a black agenda attached to that. That was a non-black agenda from top to bottom. And we saw it what for what it was and we just weren't rocking with them. And what they're going to try to do now is shame black people. Well, there's a lot of black people who lost their jobs. Are y'all going to sit back and not say nothing? Yeah, I'm not going to say nothing because these Negroes were out there doing it for themselves. They were towing the line for their non-black benefactors and their non-black benefactors flipped on them like they always do. We keep telling you there's no retirement plan and buck dancing for these other non-black groups. And y'all keep learning the hard way. Y'all better bet on black for real, for real. Let me get some callers up in here. Raise your hand if y'all want to chop it up and chime in. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got a few hundred people in here. Raise your hand if you want to chop it up and chime in. All right, we got, let's get Biggie Joe in here. All right. What's up, Biggie Joe? Biggie Joe. 
What's up? What's up, Tariq? What's up, Flex? What's up with you? I'm good. How you doing, Big Joe? Oh, man, just relaxing, man. I'm, I, I like your work. I like your work. I'm a foundation, foundation black American. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, I'm oh, in. Um, all right. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Um, I, much respect to that. I want people to call in with um, kind of with, with a topic. Okay. I don't, I don't want shout outs right now and I appreciate you. All right. I don't want to slow down what's going on right here. Just with shout outs. I feel you much respect, but I want people to kind of contribute to the dialogue that we're having here. Let's get ATL knowledge. Okay. I think that's, I think it's a sister. I think that's a dress you got on in there. But these days, you never know. Okay, no, those two dudes. Okay, I thought it was a dress, but it was some dudes with some loose shorts. Okay, all right. Um, ATL knowledge, hop on. I thought it was a girl, but my bad. Uh, you, th- you said you thought I was a girl? Yeah, well, yeah. My eyes are bad, by the way. See, and, yeah, I'm, I'm getting old, and it looked like it looked like you had on a red dress, but it's a, a Chicago Bulls uniform, and that's probably just my old ass eyes. <laughs> so. But oh ahead. no, no, brother, no! This is my uh, my varsity team. There you go. Uniform. All right. Then what's on your mind? Yes, sir, uh, Tyree. I don't know where to begin, bro. I see a lot of babbling bullshit this this week alone. Yeah. Uh, um. At first, I just want to start off by saying I've been listening to you and you on YouTube for years, almost decades now. Now I know I seem young, but I started off young too. Yes, sir. Um, I'm proud of you, man. I'm proud of you. What you built, but. I do want to just get into the topic and let other people come back up here. Um, yeah, they 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 got what they deserve. These bad winters always owned by Jews, always owned by non-whites, and also white people or their puppets to make sure that they make you look like uh, whatever type of black that they want to see in their eyes. Uh, that's the first thing I want to get to. The second thing is the senator bullshit with uh, her and her white husband. Up there, getting the the sympathy or trying to get the sympathy from black people or some god some goddamn um um uh, like J- Jesse Smollett shit uh, the support that they need to push right. their agendas and shit. So that's 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 two things in one week. That's two bullshit. Third bullshit. Real talk is. All right, but thank thank you. Let me let me get thank you so much, brother. Let me get lioness in. Lioness, uh, my sister Jade. Peace, brother. Here. Peace. How you doing? Hey, beloved, how are you, Miss I'm Jay? doing well. I'm doing well. Uh, thank you for having me on. Just a couple things. Um, I never watched BNC News on whatever platforms that they were streaming on, but I would subscribe to their Twitter and retweet. Um, I know our sister Teslin was on there several times. She's actually the reason yeah. why I subscribed <laughs> to that page on Twitter. And shout out to Teslin. Teslin was re- like the only real person on there, by the way. The realest one there. Absolutely. But yeah, shout out to and, Yeah, shout out to that sister. Yeah, and to the point that I want to make basically is I study mainstream media just in general. And so one thing that I learned mm-hmm. about BNC News is that they will always have on folks, probably with the exception of Teslin, that all had the same sort of ideology were always on the same size of the political spectrum. And so what we do as a Voices of New Black Media, we're codified, yes, but there is some variance in terms of people's life experiences, their perspectives, et cetera. My eyebrows always raise when I'm hearing Black folks talk and use the same talking points that come out of think tanks and academia. Um, So it's just really uh, highly problematic. And I'm not surprised that they didn't last too long. Has it been a year, two years? I'm not sure how long they were on the air, but I'm not sorry that they're off. Yeah, real talk, real talk. Thank you so much, beloved. Yeah, the thing is, man, with them, it was a bunch of these talking points that were coming straight out of think tanks and we saw it for what it was. They're just they're spewing the same old regurgitated nonsense from the root and the griot and all of that. We see it for what it is, man. We, we're not falling for that. And that's why, look, people are so used to us telling the truth over here. When you hear them talk, you see where they're coming from. When we talk over here in the grassroots media, you see we're not trying to get a job with them. We're not we're not rolling. And by the way, y'all see Roland calls. He calls himself calling out a lot of people from the grassroots media. And I he knew not he didn't say my name. He kind of he threw some shots at the foundation of black Americans. And he, he said, but, well, you know, he's trying to get clout. Roland is trying to get clout from the the real grassroots media. 
that's what Roland is trying to do. So he's trying to instigate little beef so that we can talk about his little chunk, chunky ass. But, we, we, you know, it, it's whatever. But these folks from the Black News Channel, we saw what they were doing. They're just regurgitating all of these Democratic Shield talking points and they're talking to us like we're silly. They're talking to us like we're naive and we just saw it for what it was. We're, and we didn't go for it. We didn't fall for it. And we're not trying to have people talk at us no more, especially when they talk about things that really don't help us in the long run. Foundational Black Americans, we're just not trying to hear no immigration talk. We, we see what immigration has done to us. When they come around us trying to push immigration, we ain't trying to hear it. Also, them trying to big up this um, Supreme Court judge nominee, we're not feeling that either. Notice they've been trying to really um, play some race angles like, oh, she's being attacked racially. Oh, and they want us to get on board. No, nah. no, nah, that woman has a whole track record of nixing cases that has to do with race. When black folks are up in court, trying to get racial justice, her ass sides with the white supremacists. She gets one ounce of sympathy from me. Nothing. She gets nothing from me. Not even an ounce of sympathy. None. None. Because she wants to get up there and she wants to be Clarence Thomas with a lace front. That's all she's going to be. No sympathy from me whatsoever. Because she's not going to get in that White House or get into that Supreme Court position and help us. Let's be very clear. That woman is not going to do anything to help us whatsoever. She has a track record of going against black interest when we fight against racial um, oppression. That woman has a long track record of siding with the, the white supremacists against us, and I'm cool on her. Let her zaddy comfort her and work it out. Let me get some more people in here. Let's get Super Kev in here. All right, what's up, Super Kev? Super Kev, turn your microphone on, sir. Super Kev, where you at, brother? Hey, what's up, Flex? What's going on, Flex? Hi. I'm good, brother. How are you, sir? Man, am I, man. Hey, look, man. You already know uh, FBA Virginia 757. We out here. We love you. We appreciate you, brother. But I do, yes, I do agree. I do disagree with you about something that's pretty important. I am a donor. What is that? I'm a donor to the museum. Okay. But man, it man, you got to you got to bring it to the East Coast, dog. It got to be in the South. It got to be, it got to be North Carolina, Georgia, Virginia. Uh, you know what I'm saying? That's the only thing that I'm like, uh, California. Oh man. Yeah, I can't. I'm, I can't run it. You know, if it's somewhere else, I was, I was low key thinking about putting it in Atlanta because there was a big ass church that was for sale and yeah. I was going to get it. But by the time I, I was out, out of the country when I saw the listing and by the time I got back in the country, they somebody had already snatched it up. But that was probably for the best because I, I, I'm going to have to run it out here. Well, in, in California, I got to run it out there to make it really, really pop off, and especially in that area. It's very important that I get it over there in that area. That's very, very, very important. So, you know, we're going to make it happen. I got to be there. I got to be hands on with it. I can't be hands on if it's in another state, you know, because I am I'm not moving nowhere. So no doubt. You know, but, anyway, oh, all right, brother. but thank you for the call. But I appreciate you, brother. Thank you so much. And by the way, um. Where are my brothers out here who can do video effects? Because we're editing our new film right now, and we got a lot of special effects and video effects that we need done. If you are brothers out here, if you guys are very thorough with video effects, special effects, you know, video effects like um, Maya, After Effects, things like that, you can do visual effects for post-production on films, please email me so I can hire some of you brothers. And I'm talking about the real thorough ones. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't send me some BS, some shit that y'all do. Y'all done photoshopped a couple of titties on some people. Oh no, 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 no. We need some thorough people and we're hiring immediately. If you are a thorough 
video effects artists. And um, y'all brothers need to hit me up. Email me. My email is info at Tariq Elite.com. That's my email. Don't email me for nothing else. If I give out my email for people I'm trying to hire, don't email me talking about, hey, listen, Tariq, man, my cousin in jail. I need $30,000. No, 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 no. I'm trying to hire people for film work. Okay, please don't flood my emails with some other shit. I'm trying to hire people for film work. It's info at TariqElite.com. That is my email. Info at TariqElite.com if you do video effects, ladies and gentlemen. Hit me up. Let's get um, the cook, Quaz, I think Quaz something. I can't pronounce your name, sir. Quaz, turn your microphone on, sir. What's going on, brother? How you doing? It's Quaz and Kirk. How you doing, man? My man, how are you, sir? What's on your mind? Hey, um, two quick things, man. I'm out here in California. Love supports you. I'm trying to support and uh, bring the. Uh, I'm out here in Stockton, California, in between uh, Oakland and uh, and uh, San Francisco. I mean, Oakland and Sacramento. Wanna, okay, yeah. yeah, so I want to uh, support the, uh, and, and bring the FBA uh, out here. And then, two, I want to get with you, man. Like I say, the hidden colors, man, I love it, man. That's just, man, it's just what you're doing, just overwhelming me with knowledge and my family with knowledge. But at the same time, I'm a personal and private chef. And I would like to get with you and start talking, introducing, not saying you haven't did it, but start talking, introducing our people about eating healthy, eating right, man, because this food is killing us, man. Real talk. Real talk. That's real talk, man. And, 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 and then so for me, man, it's like, you know, I you know, I cook for, I you know, I didn't cook for clients, man, who had heart failure. I helped reduce the heart failure with food, you know, high blood pressure, diabetes, man. So I would like to get with you on a personal level, man. You know what I'm saying? I say it like I'm in Stockton, man. I don't mind driving to LA, meet with you. We can kick back and, and just and, and just chop it up because I think, you know, for me, I'm gonna switch over to a plant based and vegan diet because I just think, you know, as a chef, you know, for me, you got to practice what you preach. And so like what you're doing, you know, like, 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 like you know what I'm saying? What you're doing, you practice what you preach. You, you real about it. You know what I'm saying? So for me, it ain't all. And if you look at uh, Instagram and TikTok and everything, everybody is macaroni and cheese and steaks. No, man, look, we was born to be plant-based and vegans, man. Our body wasn't designed to eat no meat, man. And so, and so I would like to get with you, man, and see how we can incorporate something, man, to our, to, to our people to teach us, you know, how to eat right, you know what I'm saying, how to eat healthier, man. So, you know, whatever. We can chop it up. We can definitely chop it up, man. Email me. Email me and let's chop it up, brother, for real. Because I, I'm me and my wife and the family, we're out here in Arizona. We're, we're visiting the Grand Canyon, and I've been eating fish, fried fish sandwiches for the last two days. I was just thinking, I'm like, I need to eat some vegetables. When I get home, I need to eat some vegetables and fruit because I've been eating um, all types of meat, barbecue, chicken wings, and all of that stuff. So, yes, I need um, some watermelons and grapes and pomegranates and all that stuff. When I get home, I need to do a, 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 I need to do a cleanse for one month. We got this new baby coming. So, yeah, I need to get with bro. I want to do a, 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 I tried to, I tried to do, did you do it with me, Lexi, when I tried to do the no meat, when I did the no meat thing? I went, I, I, I went vegan for about almost a month, and then I took my ass to Jamaica and gorged on jerk chicken. It was I told that I, I ate vegan for a month, and then I went to Jamaica, <laughs> and I was in them streets with jerk chicken plates for a week. So it just X'd all of the vegetables out that I had the month before. I'm like, yeah, damn. So I gotta, I gotta sustain it. I gotta sustain it. So, man, let me get some more folks in here. But yeah, I gotta get with the chef and chop it up with my brother. What's up, Doug Leon Millionaire? Let me get Doug Leon Millionaire. I think I've had you on before. Doug Leon Millionaire. What's up, on, brother? I, I really wanted to say while I feel like that non uh black uh the, the black 
trying to spell was just for the simple fact it was infiltrated by the white supremacist society itself. And also, yeah. you know, I'm tired of hearing, you know, I seen you post something about the black, the Mexicans whooping on black kids. Like, like I don't know what's going on, but us black folks, man, we need to teach our kids them old school rules. We need to beat ass when somebody fuck with us like it used to be. I don't know what's going on with the new generation, man, but. Real talk. Real talk, brother. Thank you for the call. Real talk. Let's get Jerry Curl in here. Jerry Curl. Turn your microphone on. It's a white man with a jerry curl. I got to hear this. White man with a jerry curl. Hop on. Turn your microphone on. All right. All right. I wanted to hear what jerry curl had to say. I really wanted to hear what jerry curl had to say. I guess he just wanted to come up here and show his profile. Jerry Curl, you want to turn your microphone on or you just sitting here all right let's get sar sads let's get sar sads and then we'll get um mataki in here right, sar sads where you at hey Tariq, how's it going man i'm good sar sads where you from brother uh, I'm from uh, Senegal, West Africa, but I live in France. There you go. But I flee, but, but I flee to France, you know. <laughs> you, oh, you live in France? Yeah, I live in France. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, France colonized Senegal, so you know, I feel you. You know, go up there and get you, get your paper. Exactly. What's on your mind, bro? That's what I. That's what I. That's what I wanted to actually tell you here. I want to tell you that hey, we flee, but yeah, we we learn. We learn a lot from you, man. We learn, you know, how to get down. So. You better be sure that we're gonna go get that paper. I already started that moving that movement here to get the paper, you know, make sure them white supremacists here understand that the the fucking with us is over. So you better believe we're gonna do our thing here. And we're gonna yes, also sir. support you get your thing over there. Because if you win over there, we win here. As simple as that, brother. Yeah. I appreciate what you do. Thank you so much, brother. Much respect to you. All right, let's get uh Mutaki, brother Mutaki. Peace, brother Tariq Nashi. How you doing out there in L.A., man? I'm good, brother. How are you, sir? Man, I'm maintaining, maintaining. I actually want to answer the question because I know, you know, every time you come in, people will start getting sidetracked and all that. But um, basically, non-black news channel failed because they won't speak in nothing that black people wanted to hear, especially us foundational black Americans. You know what I'm saying? Like, we've been echoing the same sentiments for shit decades you know yeah. I, i've been following you since uh since after the like right when obama was getting out of office i started following you more heavily i always knew about you shit i knew about you back in mtv days but oh yeah, oh, yeah. But, but but you know you've been awakening my eyes to all of this fuckery that they try to pull over us man like you know everything from the uh from the uh you know the katanji brown to the kamala harris and you know, they keep trying to put these figures in front of us and they, they keep trying to echo the voices of the few who got a, you know, a following that they like, you know what I'm saying? So that they can echo these things like it's representing us. It's not representing us. Dudes like you, you know, Professor Black Truth, Jason Black, you know what I'm saying? Y'all the dudes that's that's speaking the truth to power. So Real just talk. keep that up, man. Fuck, you know, uh, you know, this kind of re reckless to say, but man, fuck all them white supremacist supporting politicians. You know, they can all, you know, do what they need to do. Real talk. Thank you so much for the call, brother. And that's that's real, man. Look, man, with us, people gravitate towards us, man. And we get real numbers over here. Because when you look at, if you go to YouTube and check out the Black News Channel, if you look at their YouTube numbers, they were, they were pathetic. Nobody was listening to them. Nobody wants to hear that stuff. Because there's too many real options now. You have us out here speaking real talk, truth to power. You know we're telling the truth. You see, we're not trying to get a job. I ain't trying to get down with neither party. My thing is about what can either group, whoever's doing the best for black folks or who's going to bring some tangibles to us, that's who I want to listen to. I ain't loyal to no political party at all. That's why they can't box us in. They can't just say, okay, you guys are Democrats. Oh, you guys are just conservatives. They they, they try to play that game and they X each other out. 
I ain't down with none of them. I'm down with an agenda. I'm all about who's going to help black folks. I ain't trying to sit up here and cock and kiki at the boule parties. I'm not trying to go to the little red carpet events. I'm not trying to rub elbows at their little janky parties. That shit is corny to me. I want to know what these political people are going to do tangibly for black peoples, particularly foundational black Americans. And if there's a black so-called media apparatus, how are they going to speak on the tangibles that are supposed to come to foundational black Americans? If you have a so-called black media apparatus and they're talking about everything except tangibles for foundational black Americans, that is a illegitimate news apparatus, simple. And people see it for what it is. They are illegitimate. Sea gassed, Sega, Sega something, whatever your name is. Hop on Sega. Sega. All right, what's up, Sega? You want to try it again, bro? You want to try your microphone one more time? Let me give you one more try. All right. So I'm going to get you up out of here, bro. You're not, it's not working. All right. Um, Jerry Curl, did you ever get your microphone together? And Jerry Curl, you want to unmute your mic or do I need to remove you? Okay. Let me remove Jerry Curl because he is not ready. All right. Let's get, um, let's get Andre in here. Andre's raising his hand. And for those who want to get on, raise your hand. Andre, what's up, brother? Andre? What's up, brother? Uh, nothing. All right, what's up? Where you from, bro? Uh, you remember from last time. I what? And why am I supposed to? Why am I supposed to remember you? I don't know. I don't sit up and remember random niggas, dude. I'm sorry. And you might have called the wrong phone. This is not nine seven six bussy chat, man. Don't call up here talking about. Do you remember me? No, I don't remember you. Why would I remember some random dude? Uh, I don't know. I watch your stuff. Okay, you watch my stuff. What what what's on your mind besides? Some illicit activity. Sound like you got some other things on your mind, brother. What's on your mind? Kill on me. You're lonely? What nigga call what go to Lil Nas X's channel, dude. Don't come over here. Good night. No, Tariq. Dude, this is not that kind of party, bro. I don't know what's going on with you. Well, yeah, you, you sound like you're trying to find niggas to flirt with, and this is just not that that venue. Now, there's several out-of-work people at the Black News Channel that you might want to hit up right now because they need a couple of dollars, and maybe you can, you know, do a little something strange with a piece of change with them. I don't know, but there's a lot of out-of-work people with an agenda that you can holler at over there at the Black News Channel, but don't call here. All right. You can call them. Get on their live. Don't get over here. Maybe you can throw a little cash for a little piece of ass. I don't know what you want to do, but this is not the place you're going to do it. All right? Let's get some other people here. Because now when it gets a little late, the calls get a little uncomfortable. All right? We might be having to, we might have to wrap this thing up pretty soon. All right? Because these late night niggas who they couldn't catch a date somewhere. Now they want to call up here. Don't don't do that now. What's up, um, sister, sister or something? Sister Oracle, how you doing, brother man? Um, hey, sister Oracle, how are you? Beloved? I'm too blessed to be stressed with all this mess. Yeah. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, Tariq, I just wanted to. Um, I didn't want to talk about any subject right now. But me, I'm an expat, and I'm living in um, my current domicile is in Germany, but I spent a lot of time in Africa. And I just want what what part? What part? What part were you in? You mean in Frankfurt or in Africa? 
No, in Africa. When you went to Africa, what part? And um, you yeah, I was in Ghana. Okay, I traveled a lot because I was going to visit family. Believe me, it was very confusing, and they were taking me all over the place. I think I just even being there was a jet lag within itself. But I was in Accra, definitely. And then um, I went to see some other family members that were in um, uh, Cameroon. And so, and, and, um, and I wanted to actually spend most of my time in Benin because of other issues that have to do with spirituality. But I wanted to thank, um, and, and now my domicile is in Germany. I'm non-military, non-counselor, and I'm just an expat who had enough of this shit and had to get out of the United States. Um, I wanted. Now, how was your experience now? Now, now because over there in Ghana, I, I, to be honest, I've talked to some expats and I've heard horror stories. I've heard that it's just really not the business. To be honest, this is what I've been hearing from a lot of people who go over there. What was your experiences there? Okay, that part wouldn't be too fair because I was with family. I had I have family there, and so okay. One one thing I felt sad about. It's the separation between the the bougies and the, the your common man. Yeah, okay, now you say family. Wait, wait, wait. Let's go back to family. Now, now, are your your family members from there originally? Yeah, my um uh, my grandfather's okay. um oldest sister, she was married uh, married to a Ghanaian, and they've got Ghanaian children, and so that's how I have a connection to Ghana. And my seat, my sea mother so is from Cameroon. Yes, your sea mother. Yeah, sea mother is um, that's someone who takes care of you when your mom's not around. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So basically, you had some family through marriage that's connected. Basically, with it, right? yeah. Okay. 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 But I, I okay. live. Um, my current current domicile is in Germany. Now, what made you move, go to Germany? Okay, actually, I to tell you the truth, I took a gap year, and uh, I started traveling the world, basically. And then um, mm-hmm. I knew that I didn't want to go back to the United States, and, <clears throat> and then I started looking for jobs overseas and in other countries. And um, I, I worked in France for a little bit, but I didn't like it there. And then um, Germany had like the the best offers and and you know I, I'm good covered here. I have good insurance and some other factors. Racism you encounter everywhere. Yeah. Right. So it had to do with where I can go, and then I'm not all the time a victim of the system. Like it, I'm having to risk my job, getting fired all the time. Yeah, or being unemployed and. I couldn't go to the doctor. I don't get my social um, security. These are things that came into play in my mind at, at that time. Got yeah, it. It's... Okay. Well, th- thank you so much, beloved. Let me get some more. Thank you so much. Let me get some more people. Ed, E. Dot. Let me get E. Dot in here. E. Dot. Yes, sir. What's up, E. Dot? How are you, sir? Good. How about you? I'm good. What's on your mind, brother? Hey, I just had a quick question. Um, yes, sir. Do you be- all right? Uh, I just want to make sure I, I say this correctly, but do you believe that you know black people, as long as you know black people in in, in Africa have a false sense or uh, you know a misunderstanding of what education is and what it's supposed to be used for? Because you know, like how you mentioned, uh, you know, a lot of people come over here for education. They kind of brag about it. Yeah, you know, instead of utilizing it, you know, like 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 let's say the people in China or whatnot. A lot of, you know, their history, their background kind of says that, hey, you know, they kind of learn things by, you know, let's say planes or whatnot. They make their own planes. They they found that out by buying the plane, breaking it down and reproducing it type deal. They didn't it wasn't an original thought from them. But a lot of people brag about education, but they're not coming up with original thoughts to change, like the position they're in. And I'm just wondering, like, oh, no, I think I'm kind of saying this all over the place. I'm a little nervous, but. Right, right, right. I feel you. Okay, okay let, me, let me touch on that. That's a very good question. Yeah, See, and what, get... what we, as foundational Black Americans, we look at education differently from non-FBA Black people. Um, foundational Black Americans, when we say we want to get educated, that means we want to learn some games so that we can pretty much open up a business for ourselves. Ultimately, many of us, we want to work for ourselves. 
when we say we want to get educated, let me learn this game. Let me chop up some game and peep some game. And uh, I'm going to use that to start my own joint. That's how we look at education. We have the Tulsa mindset for the most part when we're not hindered. A lot of times we get hindered, but we try to, a lot of us, especially black men, we'll try to avoid having to work for the white supremacists for too, too long because we understand the the office politics that go with that. So a lot of times we try to get stuff popping on our own. That's why you go to places like Atlanta, you see a lot of black businesses, black owned businesses out there. You go to Houston, black owned businesses, Dallas, black owned businesses, Louisiana, black owned businesses. You go to a lot of places, you see black folks out here doing some fly stuff out here in, um, in, in California where I live. There's a lot of obstacles as far as buying real estate, but you see brothers out there hustling and grinding. Brothers will set up a barbecue grill on Crenshaw and Jefferson and be out there slinging them barbecue sandwiches like it's nothing. Cats are going to go out here and grind. They're going to get it. That's when we think of education, we think of how, I'm gonna, how am I going to use this knowledge to build my own thing where I'm the boss. Now, a lot of people from the, the diaspora, when they say they want an education, it's like, they mean I need to get an education so I can work for white people. That's all it means. I want to get an education and show the white people I have an education so they can hire me and I can work for these white folks. That's what a lot of them look at education as when they say they want to get an education. And there's nothing wrong with that. I won't even fault that. There's nothing wrong with that. But don't go bragging about that, though. That's the thing. They want to go bragging about it. You know, they come running to us like, hey, Nick, I got an education. You also, you drive for Uber Eats. So what are you bragging about? So that's why we trip on people bragging about their education. We we can go to school. It's nothing for us. And in, in, in fact, we, we were the, the foundations of many of the HBCUs that people go to. So we've been doing the education thing for the longest, but I think, really is entrepreneurship we want to own stuff that's really our focus if you want to impress us let's start pointing to what's owned who's running the show who's running things even on the street level you still want to be a boss even on the street level even if you're not in the legitimate business world foundational black americans we pretty much want to um be entrepreneurs to a certain degree let's get um goddess introvert in here we're gonna get goddess introvert what's up goddess introvert peace to how are you tonight i'm beautiful how are you i'm doing fine but um i wanted to touch on your topic on why the black news channel felt to be honest with you i just heard about them today from when you tweeted about them earlier never ever even heard about them not even from yeah. like my quote unquote woke friends and then people that just that I know that just bullshit. I've never ever heard about the Black News Channel ever. Yeah. Now, God, now, now where are you from? Below? I'm from Pittsburgh, PA. Now, how old are you? Because I'm looking at your pictures and your page. Now, how old are you, dear? I'm going to be 44 this year. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Hey, you, you, got, you got a lot of body for a damn 44 year old. What's going on with it? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Great <laughs> gratitude. I appreciate that. I have I have okay. three kids. I have a nineteen okay. year old. I have a soon to be twelve year old, and I have a ten year old. Okay, are them young dudes trying to holler at you? You over there getting them little young dudes? <laughs> well, that body over there is saying so. I, I I I still get hit on sometimes, you know. Oh, oh, you out here tricking our PlayStation for these young dudes? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Actually, Thank I'm in a like relationship, you. and it's funny. I wish he was home right now because he was actually the one. He put me on. I've been with him for 13 years. He put me on. 13 mm-hmm. years? Okay. He, he wow. put me on to you a so many years ago, like earlier on in our relationship, like one of his friends had a boot, a bootleg, Hidden Colors one DVD, and he showed it to me. Lord. Yeah, he had a bootleg, but as soon as he showed that to me, I was like, I need their original copy. <laughs> yeah. So now I, yes. I have all of them. I have all the Hidden Colors. I have the Buck Breaking. I have the eighteen oh four. 
good. Now, where's your dude now? Where is he? He's hanging out with his friends. He's having now. How old is he? He is. He just turned forty. Okay, so you got you a younger <laughs> one. There you go. I knew you had a younger dude. I knew your ass had a younger <laughs> dude. <laughs> there it is. That's what's up, man. Well, much respect to you, beloved, and thank you so yes, much. Yes, peace, brother. Yes, indeed. That's just the body. Oh, okay. Somebody, auntie, is out here trying to catch. All right. You got to watch out for them aunties right there. Somebody, auntie, is out here still in the game. <laughs> uh, she out here buying Jordans for niggas. I see you. She got a closet full of Jordans and ball for dudes. I see you, auntie. She ain't about to make that body do what it do. All right, let's see who else we got. Let's get a couple of more. Let's get um more in here. Let's get more. Mr. Moore, more hop on. Hop on. Hey, Tariq. How are you doing today? I'm good. More how are you? I'm um, great. Nice to see you again. Yes, indeed. Now, now, what what country are you from again? That flag, I always forget. What's that? Flag? Right. Yeah. So ethnically, um, Palestinian. So ancestry wise, but uh, I was raised in Canada. There you go. All right. So what's going on up there in Canada? Um, nothing much, man. I mean, we were, I think, the last Western country to lift all of our uh, mandates as far as the restrictions and stuff. Uh, there was obviously the yeah. trucker convoy, uh, not too long ago as well. But it does seem like things are starting to, thankfully, simmer down over here. Yo, good, 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 good. All right, but thank you so much, man. Let me get some more folks. Let me get some new folks in here. I've had more on here before. Let me get one or two more people on here because I don't want to be on too, too late tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, I just wanted to chop it up with the family. Let's get, um, who is this guy? Media Saboteur. Media Saboteur, hop on, bro. Media Saboteur, hop on. How's it going? Good, sir. Tariq Nish. Hey, what's going on, Media Saboteur? Now, where are you from, brother? Uh, all over the place, man, but New York City most recently. There you go. All right, what's on your mind? So, is it true you – did you go to Yale? No, I didn't go to Yale. Somebody, I, I've heard some people say that. Now, where did you hear that, that I went to I Yale? read it somewhere. I can't remember. Obviously, it was bullshit, but – yeah, yeah. I, I did a lecture at Yale, but I didn't go to Yale. All right. Never mind. That blew up my entire yeah. question then. Uh, I'll go. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. There you go. Okay. Yeah, I did not go to Yale. I didn't go to Yale, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. I, I, I did a lecture at Yale, which I used to do lectures at a lot of colleges and stuff. And I do sometimes still, but I kind of chilled out on it because I have so many children and I don't like traveling that much like that unless I'm with the babies. But no, I did not go to Yale. All right. Let's get a um, mixed Kang in here. All right. Let's get mixed Kang in here. All right. Mixed Kang. Where you What's at, up, my brother? What's going on, mixed Kang? What's up with you, Mr. Tariq? I'm chilling, man. What's on your mind? None much. Just got the shower. You feel me? About to go to the gym, probably. Well, this late? What time is it for you, my brother? Okay, it's like 11.15. Oh, what, my you goodness. In the United my clock is wrong. Yeah, I'm checking my phone right now. It's 11.15. Got to get used to this military time. Shit. I don't know then, my brother. I might turn on some Netflix, read a book, maybe get the mind right, you know. Okay, brother. I had a All question right, well, for you, though. You... Uh, no, I don't want to know what question you have because you've already started off in a very uncomfortable manner. So it sounds like you're looking for some some activity that I can't provide for you right now, brother. So that's the wrong number. Okay. Dial 1-800-LIL-NAS-X. Okay. And remember, dial a one before you dial that number. This is not the right number to dial. Okay. I don't want to hear about no nigga getting out the shower. Don't call me with that. I don't care. That's way too many details. Okay. When it gets late, y'all need get you know this is a lot of people are listening this ain't your homie you calling them you know, let's not do that melanated something melanated what's that melanated people.net melanated people what's going on family what's going on melanated people what's on your mind so, so first you know uh, i want to thank you for the work that you do you know uh regardless of what people say how they say it why they say it 
you know, your prominent figure within the foundation of Black American Spear. Uh, a lot of leadership out there, so thank you for that. Yes, sir. In regards to your statement about um, the network failing, you know, it failed exactly for the reason why you said it failed, right? Because they came in on some bullshit. Um, yeah. And I think when we look at these type of things, when it comes down to these networks or anybody else that choose to try to represent the uh, foundational black uh, mentality, we need a like benevolent association that can really yeah. do the groundwork to dig into these companies and sort for the general public so we won't be misled, right? Because I'm pretty sure it's a couple of people out there that was watching it and they're not saying that they did and they started to pick up on those false ideologies. So yeah, um, with the work that you do, maybe that's something you know you can kind of uh, sort out to some of your people uh, to get that up and running so that we can have something that we can always reference back to and say, this is an approved company and you know this is supported by foundational black americans real talk thank you for the call brother real talk man we you know they, you know people are just gonna have to stop talking to black people like the black people the black audience is stupid that's one thing it's too much contempt you got these people who talk to black folks like all black people are stupid like i said they're used to the bet crowd they think black people consist of the folks who sit up and watch Cardi B videos and loving hip hop and all that. That's who they think black people are. And they're so out of touch. They don't know there's a whole movement of black folks who are talking intellectually. They want to have real intellectual conversation without a jive ass agenda pushed at them. Black folks are not stupid. We know when somebody's pushing an agenda. We know when somebody has an angle. We know when somebody's towing the line for outside interest groups. Black folks know it. Don't don't patronize black folks no more. We, we're just done. That's why people come over here to us, because I'm not going to jive you. I'm not about to push nobody's agenda. I'm going to just keep it 100 with you and let you know what the business is, let y'all know the tricks that these people are trying to run, and let people know how we need to stay on code as far as us getting tangibles and ultimately empowerment. That's my whole thing. I want to turn empowerment for black people into a movement, particularly for foundational black Americans. I want it to be a religion. We have to look at our empowerment as a religion at this point, because we don't have time to play games with these people no more. Shelly, how are you? Deal? hop on, turn your microphone on. Hi, Tariq. How are you? I'm good, Shelly. How are you, ma'am? I'm very good. Thanks for asking. Um, I've noticed that now, like, people like Roland Martin and um, different um, Boule, um, Boule um, reporters are now using your talking points. Yes. And it's very, very irritating, especially when it, when we know what their, their real agenda is about, like trying to get a job through CNN with Roland Martin, and now him and Vicki Dillard are going through their little uh, arguments, but it's just really starting to irritate me, and I've, I've noticed that, like, we are, um, like, people like you and Jason Black and Professor Black Truth are really, really starting to um, get to the, you know, the grassroots people, like, such as myself, and really starting to learn and educate, and now I'm trying to pass that off on to my children and my family, but like you said, like Jason Black said, you can't, sometimes old niggas just can't get it, yeah. and I have an uncle that's, that works in D.C., and he just really doesn't want to see the light, so you just have to leave him behind, but I just really wanted to say I just really appreciate all the knowledge that you drop on us on a daily basis and how hard you work and I really appreciate it and um, hope the fight continues and we just keep going on until we get our reparations yes, and get what was owed to us. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Yeah, man, you can't take everybody along. Yeah, man, look, when you're trying to get freedom, even during formal slavery in antebellum America, man, you couldn't take everybody with you to freedom. You couldn't take everybody with you. Because all they would do was thwart your progress. Sometimes man, you had to keep stuff to yourself. Black folks, especially the black people who were the revolutionaries, the riders, the ones who got off the plantations, 
And again, my new movie that I got coming out talking about the Maroons, that's a story that's never told about how many black people got off these plantations and lived in these independent maroon societies all over the South. That is never, ever, 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 ever talked about it. We got a whole movie breaking that down. All of us were not just sitting on a damn plantation waiting on Massa to free us. You had black folks leaving these plantations and setting up maroon societies all over the country, and they were uh, bringing it to the white supremacist asses. Let's be very clear. These people would leave the swamps and leave their maroon colonies go kill a couple of white supremacists, rob them, take their stuff, and then go back into the swamps because the white supremacists couldn't come in the swamp areas. They couldn't come in there because, the, look, we got to be very clear. The white supremacists are cowards. They got to rat pack you. They got to all jump on you at once. Now, when you went into them swamps, you had to go in there one by one, and they didn't want them problems because the minute they stepped into them swamps, you couldn't go in there with your horses, couldn't go in there with your, your hound dogs. You had to go in there one by one and get that work one by one. And they weren't ready for that. That's why they didn't mess with them brothers and sisters in the swamps for the most part. That's the story that they don't tell you. Down there in Louisiana, the brothers down there were giving them white supremacists that work during antebellum slavery. We better understand history. This is why you know, the new movie is talking about all of that. We have to understand where we came from. But listen, we, when black folks were getting off those plantations, you couldn't tell some of these old niggas what you were doing. Some of the, you, you can tell when certain people were comfortable with the plantation. You sat up here and say, hey, man, I'm about to go. Um, I'm about to hit the road tomorrow morning, man. I'm about to get up out of here. You know what them old niggas will do. Them old niggas will go try to get them an extra butter biscuit by snitching on you. You know, so you knew you couldn't, you can't take everybody with you. You know, it's just like the walking dead, man. Some people have already been bitten by the zombie bug. And a lot of people have already been bitten by the coon bug. Ain't no turning back. There is no turning back. And also there's a, there's a flip side to it. When we, when we have black folks who are speaking for black interests, we got to have the black masses support them. Let's be very clear. I'm not talking about the Black News Network, which was a Democratic shield thing, which they were just pushing talking points for the corporate white media. When you have black people on the grassroots, black activists doing real work, promoting things and doing things for black society, the masses, they got to support them because that encourages them to do more. And that encourages other people to go out here and ride for the community. We have to support them. I want you all to understand something. When you don't support him, some people be like, well, damn it, I might as well be a coon. Do y'all know Jesse Lee Peterson before he went full coon? Jesse Lee Peterson used to be an activist. You, you had a lot of people who kind of used to be activists back in the day. Jesse Lee Peterson was a black activist, believe it or not. Jesse Lee Peterson back in the day, he kind of sort of spoke up for black issues. He saw what no money in it. So he's like, hey, wait a minute. The taste of butter biscuits is kind of, you know... It's kind of feeling good to me if I talk down on these Negroes. So Jesse flipped and went coon. Then Clarence Thomas was kind of talking radical back in the day and he wasn't getting no traction. Then he went full coon. You know, you got to look at certain people. Certain people. And then and, and let's just be clear. Certain people might have had that coon spirit already in them. Let's be clear. Certain people might have had that spirit already in them. Because the thing is whether some of us are or promoted or not, I'm not going to ever go coon. I'm not going to go that route because that's just not in my spirit. But, you know, we got to understand that we have to support people who are rocking for our best interest. Uh, let me get uh, one more call in here because, again, I'm not going to be on here too long. I'm out here in Arizona, went to the Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon, beautiful, beautiful out here in Arizona. All right. And anybody out here in Arizona, by the way, if you're in Arizona, holler at me. Um, let's get babies. I think, I don't know what your name is, brother. Baby Hello. Moore. What's up, Baby Moore? Hey, what's up, Kareem? Yeah, I was uh, going to answer your question. 
What was okay, boy? Your phone is really janky. Where are you calling from, sir? Oh, I'm calling from the Bay. From the Bay, okay. So, what's on your mind? Yeah, the reason the Black News Channel failed is because, uh, like you always say, we call out our coons. We don't just take media on face value, like just because they black. <clears throat> We check their pedigree, we see what they're saying, and usually they're not connected to the actual vein of how black people or the black community feel. So it failed ultimately because we, we already share information, we pass it around. We know not to trust these people and we know their pedigree. So Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Real talk. Thank you so much. Let's get this sister here a star. Star, hop on. Deep truth, <clears throat> rather. Deep truth. Hi. Um, so my question is a little bit off topic. Um, I'm a little bit new to the whole foundational Black American uh, movement. And my question is more okay. concerning, like, the, I've noticed a little bit of, like, the discourse from, I guess, this movement. And it seems mm-hmm. more of, like, I've seen more of, like, arguments ha- happening. And I guess my question is more geared towards why is it such a fixation on the label of us because from my um understanding from my research is that we have different you know umbrella names like we go by more sometimes hebrew sometimes you know sometimes we go by our actual tribes and some people have identified of being choctaw or cherokee or whatnot and so like why does the name matter so much is it for like legal purposes in regards to the reparations or in regards to like how words matter in, in this American corporation, like, I'm just trying to figure out, like, why is that so imperative? Thank you. It is, it's, it's important because we have to understand what group we are and other groups understand who they are and they always exclude us. The group who gets excluded is always foundational Black Americans. <clears throat> so now we're understanding who we are and we're acknowledging who we are and we're naming ourselves. So, for example... You mentioned, you mentioned Choctaw. Let's be clear. There's black people who are connected with the Choctaw, but the white and the red Choctaws usually exclude them out of any types of benefits. Okay? So us going around claiming a Native American tribe or, or one of the five so-called civilized tribes, meaning the ones that collaborated with the white supremacists, they've already been infiltrated by five dollar indians so that doesn't work um even the more thing um i understand the the legal argument as far as that but that's outdated it doesn't work because there's nothing to back up the moroccan citizen claim okay that doesn't work so what what works is us acknowledging that we foundational black americans are a specific cultural group and we're foundational to the united states and we're non immigrants. And there's nothing wrong with that. And we have a culture that's unique and it's exceptional. And that's all we do. We acknowledge that. Now, ma'am, now where are you from? Where are you from originally? I'm from um, Atlanta, Georgia. I was born and raised here. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Both of your parents are foundational Black Americans or descendants of slaves? Yes, they in are. Yes, they okay. are. Yeah. My, uh, my mom is from Georgia. My dad is from Georgia. And we have roots in um, Alabama, surrounding yeah. areas of the South, yes. Yeah, and you know, the people who like to argue with us about that are usually non-FBA people because when we acknowledge our FBA lineage, that's exclusionary. We, we exclude people. So now we're talking about getting tangibles for our group, and that excludes others. And so many people have been used to getting stuff from us fighting for it and working for it. They have a sense of entitlement now. Now, we can't get none of their stuff. Now, if they get anything popping, we can't touch it. But anything we get, we're supposed to share with everybody. And we're saying no. And if people want to argue, let them argue. But the thing is, we're on code. And they can't do anything about it. And that's why they're arguing. Because they don't really bring anything to us. So they can't take anything away from us. So the only thing they can do is argue online, which is, you know, in, inconsequential to us because we are on code and we're making moves out here. That makes sense, beloved? Yes, it does. Thank you so much for your time. I Thank appreciate you. it. Mm-hmm. 
Yes, indeed. Yeah, that's the good thing about us being on code. Us being on code. And, and, and this whole thing with the Black News Channel falling flat. Understand, they fell flat. You know why? Because you didn't support them. All of you listening, you did not support them. That's why they fell flat. You weren't there lifting them up and letting them run game on you. You understand? That black FBA grassroots audience is real. And I'm telling you, it's powerful. And when we get on code, we start flexing that power. The reason why we've been exploited so much is we let other groups come over here and try to represent us. And we fall into this big black umbrella and then we'll just go along with everything that people bring to us. Now we're saying, no, we're not doing that. And let me tell you something. One million codified people is more powerful than 200 million people who are completely off code. I tell you, I go even deeper, man. A thousand codified people are more powerful than 200,000 or 200 million people who are not codified at all. You want to know why small groups of whites and Asians can go into Africa and dominate it within weeks? They show up in, with $3 in their pocket, then the, a month later, they run half the country. That's because they're codified. And the people there are not. There's so many tribal differences and ethnic differences. It's completely non-codified. Nobody's on code over there. We have to keep it a buck. The closest group of people who are black, who have a mass code, somewhat of a code, that's us over here, to be honest. This is why we can get more stuff done. And now that we're really tightening up that code as far as us understanding our foundation of black American lineage, more stuff is starting to get done. Now, if you look around, you see things really getting popping with us right now because we're getting on code. And that scares a lot of people because that makes everybody else have to step their game up and hold their own nuts, so to speak, because we can't do all the fighting for you. And that's not even anything to argue about. We're just talking about facts and we're talking about lineage and we're talking about what needs to be done. Okay, let's get Dre Chance on here. Dre Chance, let's get Dre Chance on here. I keep saying I'm going to take one or two calls, but it, it keeps getting interesting. Dre Chance, hi. Hello? On. Hello, Dre Chance. Did you talk about, I don't know, I didn't come at the beginning of your conversation. I always try to catch you, but did you talk about that dumb lady, that justice lady? I forgot her name, Kalani, whatever. Did you talk about her already? Yeah, I think I did earlier, but thank you, beloved. Okay, she's confused. Okay, somebody's auntie is confused. Y'all get your auntie's phone. She's confused, and auntie sounds like she's been drinking a little bit. Okay. Auntie was playing spades earlier and drinking on a little something on this lovely evening. Okay. All right, auntie. All right. Okay, now we're getting drunk aunties calling up, so y'all know what that means. We might have to get up out of here in a second. Let's get Art Fart in here real quick. All right, Art Fart, hop in, Art Fart. Art Fart, hop in, brother. Turn sorry, your microphone sorry, on. sorry, I'm on, I'm on. There you go. Where are you from, Art I'm Fart? actually in Phoenix, Arizona. Oh, wow, that's what's up, man. Yeah. I'm out here in Flagstaff right now. Oh, yeah, yeah, I heard you, heard you. You know, it's weird, I've been living here 18 years, but I've never been up to Flagstaff or whatever. Well, I've been up. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know why. But I had a question and a statement. Yeah. Um, you know, I listened to the last few clubhouses you did, and it's weird that all these people from different backgrounds, whether they're Black people in Africa, the UK, or Mexican people, or in Mexico, and all this, and the reparations conversation comes up, they, they're like... Your, your phone is re really, really messing up, brother. So I have you... Um, but let's get George... George? Oh, is this a white supremacist in here, George? George's... 
Weefing with your Bucci cat, Georges. Okay, we have a white supremacist named Georges in here putting his Bucci cat to the phone and want us to hear how it sounds. It sounds real wide, dude. You need to let dude stop doing you like that. Okay? He's letting us hear how he sounds when he bends over. And it sounds like you real wide down there, brother. Okay, let's get some more people in here. You need to tighten it up, brother. You need to soak your booty cat in vinegar or something. You sound real loose. All right, let's get um, uh, let's get one more folk person in here. One more person in here. Uh, and hopefully your phone is good. Hopefully your phone is good. All right. Hopefully your phone is cool. All right. All right. One more, then I'm going to get up out of here. And let's make it a good one. Raise your hand if you want to get on. Because we got, eh, got a few hundred people up in here. All right. Raise your hand if you want to get on. Let's try it again. Raise your hand if you want to get on. Who's this brother here? Uh, there you go, Blue. Okay. I want an interesting caller. And, and by the way, go to officialfba.com, officialfba.com, to get information about the new FBA maroon flags. We got the, the flag shirts popping off. Let's get um, Mahdi. Let's get Mahdi in here. Mahdi, I'm, I'm wonderful. How are you, Tyree? I'm good, man. Where are you calling I'm, from? Mahdi? I'm located in Georgia right now, but I'm from Detroit. Born there you go. What's Detroit, on you? But I'm in, in Georgia now. Okay, what's on you? What is the first step that we as FBA must take in order to once we become unified what is the first step we must take in order to receive reparations so we're unified we're all on the same code what is the first step we must take in order to receive reparations we have to let whatever politician know especially the democratic politicians we have to let them know we're not going to support you if you do not put reparations on the table that's what we do we let them know we are not going to support them. I don't care about y'all putting this, this mammy in the Supreme Court. We don't care about y'all passing the Hair Act where you can't discriminate against braids. We don't care about symbolic nothing burgers. We don't care about politicians singing at churches. If you do not put reparations on the table, tangibles for foundational black Americans, we, the black voting bloc, which is what they need, we're not going to support them. And they understand that's where it's going. That's why they're flooding the zone with these immigrants from all over the place. These Ukrainian immigrants that they're about to bring in, they're about to bring in 100,000 of them. All right. They're hoping that these people are going to be a Democratic voting bloc that's going to replace us. So they're doing everything they can to cobble together a voting bloc that would ultimately try to replace us. So. Our thing is that we collectively pull out of supporting them. We'll hold that vote and we'll hold it until somebody comes along talking about what we need them to do. It's just that simple. All right. But anyway, man, let me get up out of here, man. It's been real much respect to everybody. I appreciate y'all for tuning in tonight. Um, go to Amazon, get my book, Foundational Black American Race Bader. Go to HiddenColorsFilms.com to get all the Hidden Colors films and go to buckbreakingmovie.com to get the film Buck Breaking and you guys have a great night. I'm a holler.